So magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Alam niyo po kahapon ay nagkaroon tayo ng ating Couples Fellowship. Sinong naka-attend? Yehey. <laughs> okay, ah uh, kay buti ng Panginoon, napakasaya po nung ating Couples Fellowship po kahapon. So God has been so good and to those who prayed even if you're not part of the Couples Ministry, we really appreciate that you pray for us. Especially yung atin pong prayer team, pag every Friday, pinapag-pray nila yung ating mga activities. Next Sunday, mga kapatid, kasi ngayon nasa James pa rin tayo, di ba? I'd like to also tell you na uh, we have, uh, okay, two more, all right. Actually, last two messages on James and then we are proceeding to a new series. Okay, so ang bilis. Ang dami na natin na, na finish, mga kapatid. We finished the book of John. Ang haba nun. Ilang taon yata natin inaral yun. <laughs> Hindi pa ako masyadong marunong sa expository, kaya napak- humaba ng husto. Ano po, we had Ephesians, Galatians, okay, Habakkuk from the Old Testament, and then we have James, All right. Uh, I don't know kung anong gagawin ni Lord yung susunod. I'm still praying about it. Pero next Sunday po, hindi po tayo, we will not have our usual series on James because next Sunday is gonna be a bit, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a bit special, okay? Because we have a guest, a guest, all right? We have a guest, so I'll just let you know next week. So please don't miss our Sunday service. Incidentally, it's also the sixth anniversary of uh, GOG Bayambang. Okay, so, opo. Kaya po, after po noon, yung mga ibang mga nais mag-join, can join us, All right. Uh, so, next week, please don't miss because something is, uh, will be announced next week and we will also be sharing something special next week, All right. So, brothers and sisters, could you all please stand and let us read the word of the Lord. Our message today is about slander. Okay, slander and empty boasting. James 4, 11 to 17. Let's read it all together. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Let's come before the Lord. Salamat, Panginoon. Our loving Heavenly Father, this is the day that you've made and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Father God, pour out your blessing. Pour out your mercy and your grace upon your people today. Tunay nga, Panginoon, gamitin po ninyo, Lord Jesus, ang tip- pagtitipon po namin ito upang ipamalas ang inyong kabutihan. Ipang imalas, ipamalas, Panginoon, ang yaman ng inyong grasya, Lord God, pag-ibig sa bawat isa. At Lord, sa aming pong pakikinig ng inyong mga salita, as we discuss, Father God, this message about, Lord, this hard topics on the sins of slander and empty boasting. Father, we pray that you will grant us, Lord, enlightenment. You will grant us, Lord Jesus, Lord, the power of your word so that those things, Lord Jesus, that mess our lives, those things that bring chaos to our lives, Lord, will be taken care of. It will be, Lord, cleansed. We shall be Lord, purified, and there will indeed be peace and harmony, Lord God, in our relationships. Be it here in the church or at home, Father God, indeed it is our prayer, O Lord God, that in all that we do, may it continue to cause glory to your name. 
Maraming marami pong salamat sa mga kapatiran na nandito ngayong araw na to. Nagpupuri kami sa inyo, O Jesus, na tunay nga Panginoon, Lord, kayo po'y dakila, banal, at kayo ang Diyos na buhay. Maraming marami pong salamat. Pinupuri po kayo at sinasamba sa matamis na pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Mumupo na po tayo, mga kapatid. Purihin ng Diyos. Ano po ba ang uh, tungkol dito sa topic po na ito? Slander and empty boasting. Uh, these are two topics actually, but since both are quite short, so we are looking at it uh, at the same time, all right, uh, in one message. So let's look at quickly our outline for today. Under the topic of slandering others, first is what is it? Ano ba ito? The other is why is it wrong? And then the second is empty boasting, an example of a boastful statement. The folly, ibig sabihin ng folly, the foolishness of empty boasting and what is a practical solution for boasting, all right? Slandering, let's go straight into the topic. Anyway, palagay ko naman, hindi na ito mahirap intindihin, all right? Dahil ang, ang topic na ito ay napaka-popular, ito ay napaka-common. In fact, lahat tayo guilty dito, tama po. Basta pag ikaw ay ng chismis ng kapwa, na guilty ka na dito sa kasalanang slander. Okay? So, itong slander, hindi lang ito pang journalism. Okay? Ito, ano rin ito sa Christian life, ginagawa, kinokomit lang din natin, kinokomit, nakokomit din natin ito, mga kapatid. The word slander or katalaleo, okay? Let's look at that. It literally means to speak against. To speak again. Sa Tagalog, pagsasalita laban sa iba. Okay? Pagsasalita laban sa iba. To speak against someone in a hostile, ridiculing, or contemptuous way. Alright? So you talk about a person in a hostile, ridiculing, or contemptuous way. So in other words, alam mo na mali yun kasi yung heart mo mali. Alright? Ano pa po? It is distracting from someone's reputation by malice of speech directed against one's neighbor. So, yung slander is using speech so that to dis so you you are going to destroy. Maybe in your mind, hindi mo naman iniisip na ay hindi destroy ko na palasya. Pero the fact that you are uh, saying something that disrespects another person that is already. All right, slander. Okay, so the, the whole point here is what is your heart? What is your, what is your motive whenever you speak against a person? All right? Sa, kaya sabi rito, merong malice. All right, may malice involved. I remember one person was saying, why do we gossip about others? We gossip about others, lalo na yung mga nakasakit sa atin, because it's our way of getting back, getting even. So, hindi ka makaganti. So, itchichismis mo na lang siya. Di ba? Yung pong ganun, ano po? So, eto. Ano ang mga examples ng slander? Speaking against someone in secret. Okay? Ano pa po? Bringing incorrect accusations. Ano pa po? Gossiping behind another person's back. Destructive verbal attacks. Making conclusions when we don't know the whole story. Nako, paborito natin to, di ba? Meron tayong conclusions. Nakita lang natin, okay, may nabasa tayo, may nakita tayong ganito, tapos meron na tayo agad na conclude sa ating mga isipan. Sowing seeds of discord. Ito po. Ano naman yung labeling someone? Labeling someone, ito madalas rin natin itong makumit na kasalanan. Kunyari, kumain kayo, merong pong piging, handaan, tapos yung nakatabi mo, naglagay siya ng maraming pagkain. Tapos sa isip-isip mo, kalatog pinggan. <laughs> oh, judging yun, judging yun, okay? Slander na yun. Kahit hindi mo pa sinabi, pero in your mind, hinusgahan mo na. PG. Oh, di ba? Yan yung mga masasakit na salita. Alam nyo po, uh, 
I grew up in a family <laughs> because my mother was such an articulate woman, <laughs> okay? Both in the good and in the bad way. <laughs> okay, so uh, these are words na mat alam niyo yung matutunog. Okay, these are words na matatalim, alright? Pero mga kapatid, pag-Christian sa tayo, hindi na natin yun ginagawa. Amen? Hindi na tayo nagli-label, nagsasabi ng mga masasakit, uh, ano po, to label others. Okay, so, ano pa po? So, eto yun, eto yung mga examples. Maybe we, there are other ways that we can, we, 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 we do commit the sin of slander. In one of his psalms, David links the sin of slander to pride. Okay, Psalm 101 verse 5. Whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Alright? Tapos, kakabit nun kagad-agad sabi ni David, Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. So, notice po natin, yung slander, ang kakambal niyan, is a proud heart. Bakit po ganon? Last week, we saw that the root cause of worldliness is actually pride. You remember? That we are worldly because we want to feed our pride. Okay? But you know what? Pride is also the root of slander. Because when a person is proud, lumalabas po ito sa ating speech out of the abundance of the heart. If you have unkind words, it means you have an unkind heart. If you have harsh words, it means you have a harsh heart. If you have rude words, it means you have a rude heart. If you have proud words, if you, it means you have a proud heart. All right? So it always reflects our hearts. So when we slander others, it is usually because we don't want to consider others to be above ourselves we think we're perfect or we are better than others thus we slander yun naman po talaga kasi yung ibig sabihin nun. when we slander or judge others all right what we are saying is we are perfect we're better that's why we are like judging them that they are not kaya inaangat natin yung sarili natin that's why we actually feel good when we slander correct Kasi kumbaga, all right, of course, I don't mean that in a good way, di ba? When we slander others, it feeds our self-righteousness. It feeds our, ano po, yung, yung, yung desire natin na tayo ay maging whole, maging righteous, ano po. And, but it's wrong because we do that at the expense of putting others down, no? And of course, if we're Christians and our identity is already in the Lord, there's no need to do that. Because our identity is already rooted in the Lord. Okay? So, kumbaga, there's no need to prove whatever. Alright? So, to slander and judge another one is the complete opposite of the humble spirit that God wants. Okay? Now, another thing about the word slander. Next. Do you know that the word devil means slanderer? Diabolos. Okay? It means to slander, it means to accuse, defame, alright? Manira ng kapwa. A false accuser who unjustly criticizes in order to hurt, to malign, okay? In order to condemn, especially with a view to sever a relationship. Alright? So, ang jablo wala talagang magandang iniisip yan. Ang iniisip niya ay parating manira ng relationship. Okay? Kaya po, pag merong slander, ang kakabit niyan, division. Okay? Ang kakabit niyan, hindi peacemaking. Ang kakabit niyan, magkawatak-watak, mag-away-away. Alright? Kaya... Kung hindi yun ang purpose ng heart mo, ba't mo sinasabi ang isang bagay, wag mo nang sabihin. ba? Kasi mag-create siya ng division. Alright? Kaya, bumabalik siya talaga dun sa heart natin po, mga kapatid. In Revelation 12.10, ang sabi dito, The devil is called the accuser of the brethren. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng devil. The accuser of the brethren. 
So, ang ibig sabihin nito, when we slander one another, ginagaya natin ang demonyo. Ginagaya natin si devil pag nag slander tayo. Because it's the work of the devil. It is sowing seeds of division. And because the work of the devil is to steal, to kill, to destroy, slander destroys fellowship within the church. Okay? It, slan it, fe it destroys the fellowship within the church. Now, ngayon si, alam na natin yung meaning ng ano, ano, to speak against with a malicious intent. Okay? To speak against someone with a malicious intent, to hurt, to divide, ano, okay? Uh, to condemn, alright? So, ngayon po, James now delves into the subject and tells his readers that slandering a brother involves the law. Okay? It involves the law. But how can James claim that criticism of a fellow believer is tantamount to criticism of the law? Kasi pag tinignan po natin, okay, let's go to the next verse. So, uh, doon na tayo ngayon sa, sorry, number two na to. Why is it wrong? Ah, sige, sige, okay lang. Next, next na. Alright, James 4. Sabi rito, di ba? Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them, speaks against the law. Okay? So, i-explain natin to. And judges the law. Okay? When you judge the law, you're not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. So, let's explain. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Why do we speak against the law when we speak against a brother or a sister? So, anong, bakit may connection yung law? Pag nagsaslander ako, ang bigat naman, agad-agad. Pasok, uh, lawbreaker na ako. Tapos, ginudge ko pa yung law. Ayan, tama-tama, may mga law students tayo dito. Ano, ano, damang-dama nila yung ibig sabihin ng law. Diba? What does it mean to judge the law when you slander? Palagay ko, wala ito sa classes nyo. Diba? <laughs> diba? Wala kayong lesson tungkol dito that when you slander, you judge the law. Okay? Because iba yung law na to eh. This is God. This is the law of God. Alright? So, because when we judge others, simple lang, we are breaking God's law. Okay? We are breaking God's law. Ano ba yung law na yun? So, since ang kausap ni James dito ay mga hudyo, so of course, pag sinabing law, Leviticus yan. ba? Old Testament, Pentateuch yan. So, tingnan natin yung Leviticus. Ano bang sabi tungkol sa slander? Nandun ba talaga yun sa law? Leviticus 19, Verse 16, yes, do not go about spreading slander among your people. Okay? Tapos after that, two verses after that, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So clearly, the law tells us not to slander, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Speaking against a fellow believer contradicts, therefore, the demand of the law that we love our neighbors. So we fail to keep the law, and when we fail to keep the law, we also judge the law. Because what we are saying is we are above the law. So, ito yung sabi ng batas ng Diyos. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the royal law. But if we judge others, then we're not anymore fulfilling the law to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are now putting ourselves above the law. Okay? We are now putting ourselves above the law. So, si Simon Kistmaker, isa pong nagbigay ng commentary tungkol dito. Ang ganda, sabi niya. To clarify it better, sabi niya, in court, a judge must be impartial in evaluating the evidence and be just in applying the law and passing sentence. Tama naman, di ba? Kung ikaw ay isang hukom, ikaw ay isang judge, dapat impartial ka dun sa nakuha mong mga ebidensya. Sa pag apply nung o paghusga, pag apply nung batas. On the other hand, ang isang slanderer daw, by contrast, generally neglects to learn all the facts. Okay? Avoids speaking in the presence of the accused. 
sets aside the law of love, and as, as a self-appointed judge, hands down the verdict. Okay, so yun pala yun. Okay, kaya talaga pong we judge the law. Kasi nga, when we slander, we actually do these things. We say things even if we don't know all the facts. We avoid speaking in the presence of the accused. We set aside the law of love. Okay, kaya again, it will always go back to why do you say what you say? Okay, now let's go to verse 12. There is only one lawgiver and judge. Ang ibig sabihin nito, uy, isa lang ang tagabigay ng batas. Isa lang ang tagahusga. Hindi ikaw yon, hindi ako yon, hindi tayo. Only one person is above the law. Sabi rito, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Brethren, God alone has the right to modify or overrule the law. God is the only lawgiver and judge, and He alone is able to save and destroy. Amen po? Okay, so just lang ang nagbigay ng batas, nagbigay ng hukom. Ay, mm, sorry po. Siya lang ang tagapagbigay ng batas, at siya lamang ang totoong hukom. At siya lamang po ang merong karapatan at kapangyarihan na magligtas o manira o maghusga. Kaya sabi dito, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Nako, magtago na tayo sa ilalim ng mga upuan natin. Kasi di ba nakakahiya naman talaga? Oo nga, Lord, nakakahiya po talaga. Bakit po ba ako nag-judge? Eh, sino po ba naman ako? Alam niyo po yun. Marami po akong ganong experience. Maari hindi ko sinabi sa mouth ko, pero sinabi ko sa isip ko. Tapos biglang kinorek ako ni Lord, nakita ko yung bigger picture. Tapos gusto ko magtago sa ilalim ng upuan. Kumbaga, na-review ako ni Lord, na-convict ako ng Lord kasi parang nag-assume ako, nag-judge ako. Hindi ko naman alam yung buong scenario. Alam niyo po yun. Hindi ko naman alam yung buong facts. And maybe we, you don't say it out loud, but you say it in your mind. And still, di ba, kulang na lang sabihin mo eh. Di ba? Pero since nandun yun sa mind mo, nagsisin ka na kay Lord din eh. Ano po? Kaya po, talagang, ito, it's a sin of pride eh. No? It's really a really a sin of pride kasi... Why are you making judgment? It means that you know better than the Lord. You know better than the situation. Why? Do you know all the circumstances? Alam mo ba lahat ng issues? Alam mo ba lahat ng facts? So kung di mo naman alam yung lahat ng facts, huwag ka munang, ano po, mag-come up with a conclusion. Huwag ka munang maghuhusga. All right. Therefore, instead of placing ourselves above the law and assuming the position of a judge, ano dapat natin gawin? Kasi di ba sabi, love your neighbor? We ought to encourage and love our fellow man, all right? So, of course, one practical way that we can do that is kung meron talagang bumabagabag sa isip natin, all right? For example lang po, kunyari, nakita mo yung, yung asawa ng kaibigan mo, merong ka-holding hands na iba, o di ba? Siyempre, ay mo mag-judge agad-agad. But what will you do, okay? Hindi mo siya ichichismis. Kausapin mo yung person, Uy, pare, May, may, nakita kita kanina. May, may ano ka, ka-HH. Hindi mo alam. Baka, al, 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 ha? Bu oh. Galing talaga nitong si, ano? <laughs> bulag pala. Okay, hinawakan niya. <laughs> okay, meron akong instant illustrations dito. <laughs> bulag pala. Okay, salamat ha, attorney. Pastor ni. <laughs> so, yun po, ni po ba? So, in, Iyon na nga eh, di ba? Kailangan, tanongin mo muna talaga. Ano, 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 ano bang totoo? Kasi na-bother ka, di ba? Sabi nila, to see is to believe. And I saw it with my eyes. Di ba? But you really still need to ask eh. Di ba? To really, really be sure. Okay? So, kailangan mag-investigate ka muna, di ba? Nang mabuting mabuti. So, iyon po, we are not in a position to judge. Bakit po? Okay, ito. We ourselves are in need of the mercy and grace of the Lord. So, ibig sabihin lang ito, wag po tayo maging fault finder. Wag po tayo maging critical. Wag po tayo mapang, uh, uh, mapamintas ng kapwa. Okay? Wag po tayo maging mapapuna ng ating kapwa. Okay? Ito yung mga... Uh, minsan nagdodraw tayo ng conclusions. 
dinidisiplin niya ni Lord, pinapanish siya ni Lord kasi hindi siya nagsaserve sa Panginoon. O di ba, minsan ganun tayo eh. Pero we should, sabi nga, what is, reli- what is true religion? Religion is what? Bridling your tongue. <laughs> Diba? Bridling your tongue. Control your tongue. Huwag mong sabihin. Kasi true religion is what? Learning how to control your tongue. Okay? So, again, laging mas okay yung attitude na, Lord, I don't know the whole scenario. I don't know the whole situation. And yun na nga po eh. The humble attitude na we also need mercy and grace. So, let's not put ourselves as a judge. Okay. Now, given this, okay, so, Ang hirap magturo, ano? Kasi kinakailangan mong ilagay siya sa mas malaking context, eh. Bakit po? Kasi po, si Jesus, sinabi niya, do not judge. Alright? Sinabi ni Lord, do not judge. Alright. Ngayon, kailangan natin tong ilagay rin sa proper context. Bakit po? Kasi lahat ng mga utos ng Panginoon, lagi natin i-consider, meron siyang, uh, kumbaga meron siyang, i- meron siyang i-regulate mo siya. Depende dun sa, depende dun sa situation. Alright? So, ang bawal dito is yung spirit na, ng, 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 ng kokondem. Okay? Yung spirit na, ng malicious. Alright? Now, ano yung balance? Alright? Let's look at the first balance. James is not prohibiting, prohibiting the necessity of revealing right and wrong among its members. Alright, so for example, kung nangyari na lang, uh, mamaya magagalit si James kasi <laughs> nag- may, uh, may boasting na nangyayari eh. Alright, so dun sa ano, dun sa loob ng church. It's not judging, for example, when someone is caught stealing and we talk to the person and tell him that what he has done is stealing. So hindi naman po pwedeng sabihin ng tao, but mo ko ginudge? Hindi, mo, hindi kita ginudge. Sinasabi ko, nagnakaw ka. ba? Totoo yun, nagnakaw ka. But mo ko ginudge? Kasi, kunyari, nahuli mo, nagsisinungaling siya. Okay? Sino man po ito sa inyong pong pamilya or something? Mom, you're judging me, for example. The kids. No, I'm not judging you. I'm telling you the truth. You did not tell... You di, you are not honest. <laughs> okay? So, iba yun. Okay? At hindi judging yun. Ano? Kung baga, kung clear na merong kailangang i-correct na mali, na kasalanan, at sabihin at i-identify. Kaya makikita nyo, iba yung purpose eh. Pag judging, di ba, hindi, hindi mo masasabi yun in front of the person eh, kasi nga malicious yung intention mo. Pero kunyari, kumbaga, you are uh, disciplining someone, like your child, for example, and you're telling him or her kung ano yung mali, di ba, kinakausap mo siya, and it is to build him up, to build her up, to help him mature, all right, to restore a person. So, it's a totally different purpose. Yung heart mo kasi, it's not to 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 slander, to destroy someone's reputation, but to build a person. Okay? Ano pa po? It's also not judging when someone is in shameless or blatant disobedience to the standards of the faith and he or she is excluded from fellowship. Alright? So, isang example po dito ay yung case ng, ad- ng sexual immorality sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Dito, si Paul ay nagpatong ng husga. Okay? Paghuhusga doon sa church patungkol sa dalawang members ng church na nagko-commit ng sexual immorality, specifically incest. Alright? So, a man has his father's wife. So, stepmother pala. So, hindi yun judging, okay? Because there is a clear sin that was being done. And si Paul, pag when you go to 1 Corinthians 5, ang sabi ni Paul, that person needs to be judged and excluded from fellowship kasi nga, it is defiling, alright? Yung purity nung church, yung testimony nung church. Okay? So, yun po. Alam nyo why, are, why I'm saying this? Kasi if we don't put a balance to it, our world today would always use this excuse so that we don't point out what is righteous. Alright? So our, our world today is so politically correct in everything. Na kahit na it is wrong, it is sinful 
pa paano mo masasabi na hindi sinful or wrong, for example, yung pedophilia? Kunyari, hindi yan sexual preference. Perversion yan. Diba? Hindi yan sinasabing ano lang, parang uh, ad, 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 tawag dito gender ideology. Hindi po po pwede yun. It's perversion. Okay? And a lot of times, the people today in our generation, they would say, Christians are judgmental. Okay? Christians are... Yes, we should not judge in the, in the, in the spirit that James was saying here, which is, is slander. But the other side is we have to discern. We have to differentiate what is right from wrong. Okay? So, ano po yung pangalawa? It is also not judging when we see a brother falling into sin and we gently and carefully rebuke that brother. Okay? In fact, James chapter 5 verse 20 says, ito yung ituturo ni James sa pinaka last part ng kanyang sulat. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. So again, the purpose is you talk to the person, you tell the person, you rebuke the person because it's not to destroy but it is to restore him to the right path. Alright, so yun yung purpose po noon. Okay, let's go now to the second portion of our message. Let's now go to empty boasting. Lahat po ito tuhog-tuhog kasi mapapansin natin, dikit-dikit pa rin kasi lahat ito ang pinag-uugatan is a proud heart. Okay? A proud heart. What is empty boasting? Now, there was another issue that James needed to address. Well, apparently sa congregation na to, maraming mga bida at sikat. All right? Maraming mga hambog. All right? So, kaya si James, kinakailangan niya itong i-address. So, aside from conflict, fights and quarrels, a judgmental spirit among the brethren, it appears that bragging was also prevalent in the church. Okay? It appears that bragging was also prevalent. Uy! Usong-uso ngayon ang bragging dahil sa social media. Diba? May mga terms pa nga eh. I-flex mo. Yung una, hindi ko na... Ano yung flex? Ah, yun pala... An another word pala yun for brag. Oo, i-show off mo, di ba? I-brag mo. So, ngayon, these things are now acceptable. So, sabi nga ng, ng Bible, there will be difficult times in the last days because men will be boastful. Men will be lovers of self, di ba? So, we see this, kaya I think this one is really, really relevant to us. All right, how do we know that we are already bragging or boasting? The example of empty boasting that James gives is in verse 13. Now listen, you who say, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. All right, sige, sige tingnan natin. May mali ba dito sa statement na ito po? Today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year, carry on. Siguro pag binasa natin, sasabihin natin, may, may, may mali ba dyan? Ano lang naman yan, di ba? Nag, for, nag, ano ka, parang foresight, nagpaplano ka lang naman, di ba? May mali ba dyan? Ngayon, o kaya sa kamakalawa, o maybe sa isang taon, uh, lilipat na kami, titira na kami sa ganito, dito na kami mag-work, alright? Tapos, uh, magtatayo kami na tindahan doon, uh, build kami ng negosyo. May mali ba doon? Okay? Di po ba? Yan ang tanong eh. Is, it, is there something wrong with that? Tingnan natin ang sinasabi ng Bible. Is it wrong to make plans? What does the Bible say about planning? Proverbs 21 verse 5. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit. Alright? So which means that uh, if you're a diligent person, you are a person who plans. Alright? If you're a diligent person, you're a person who plans, plans and that leads to profit. So, merong, may, may outcome. Okay? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1. Go to the ant, go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, office or ruler, officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Bakit daw 
natin tularan o aralin ang langgam kasi wala namang super wala naman siyang bisor pero siya ay nagpaplano para sa panahon na wala nang pagkain, di ba? So pag summer naghahanda siya, nag nag nagiiimbak siya ng pagkain. So dito makikita po natin of course a host of other verses especially from the book of Proverbs. Hindi kalooban ng Diyos na tayo ay maging tamad. Okay? Hindi kalooban ng Diyos na tayo ay walang motibasyon sa buhay. Hindi kalooban ng Diyos na tayo ay hindi magplano para sa ating kinabukasan. Alright? So, yun po. So, huwag kayong mag-guilty kung nasa insurance kayo. ba? Diba? Na, naku, baka naman nagiging earthly-minded na ako. ba? Diba? Sabi ni Lord, okay, be heavenly-minded. Bawal lang, so, hindi na ako magpapa-bibili ng insurance policy. Okay, so hindi po ganun yung, hindi ganun, okay, kapag Christians po tayo, merong tamang planning. Okay, so bakit mali yung planning sa James chapter 4? What, why did James rebuke that kind of planning? Alright, let's look at the next one. The Bible teaches against two kinds of extremes. One extreme is never setting goals, coasting in life, apetics, petics, complacency, all right, yun nga, walang motivation. But the other extreme is setting goals without thinking of God. Okay? It is planning without the thought of God. And that is called what? Presumption. All right? That is called presumption. Yung nagpaplano ka na walang thought at all tungkol sa gusto ng Diyos. Nagpaplano ka without thought at all kung ito ba ay kalooban pa ng Panginoon o hindi. All right? But and you go right through your plan and you think that it's okay. All right? So, tingnan natin kung ano yung characteristics nitong words nung bis businessman kasi ito eh, yung nagsabi noon, ano? So, dun sa original words no, that, that that person is actually a business person. Unang-una, he is a what? He is a self-determined person. Sabi niya kasi, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city. Anong mapapansin ninyo dun sa, sa merchant na ito? Today, tomorrow, we will go to this or that city. Well, he was making his plans independently. Now, of course, you have to consider, ang kakausap po rito, church. So, ito ay isang kristyanong negosyante. Isang Kristiyanong businessman. So, sa kanya, hindi niya iniisip kung ano yung kalooban ng Panginoon. He was making his plans independently. What he thinks, what he plans, that he will do. Okay? What he thinks, what he plans, yun ang gagawin niya. Alam nyo, there is a possibility na yung nagsasabi nito, mahusay sa negosyo. Okay? Sabi ng ibang commentators, kasi kung baga, naka-experience ka na ng maraming wins sa pagnanegosyo mo, so kabisado mo na. Kabisado mo na yung kalakaran. Kaya alam na alam mo na ako nang gagawin mo, anong bubuksan mong negosyo, ano yung mga gagawin mo, kasi bihasa ka na. The Bible says, that's pride. That's arrogance. Okay? What else? This merchant is self-confident. I will spend a year there. Spend a year. Siguro mga isang taon tayo dyan. Alam mo, sigurado na ako dyan eh. Ito lang kailangan mo dyan. Give it a year, give it a two, ROI ka na. Yeah, ganyan yung mga usapan, di ba? Talaga. Pag Christian na, hindi na dapat ganyan ang words natin, mga kapatid. Alright? Hindi na tayo dapat magsalita ng ganyan. Ano pa po? Self-centered. Bakit? Carry on business and kasing kasing. Make money. Yun pala ang bottom line. Okay? Kasing-kasing. Di ba? Nagpe-peso sign ng mga bata. <laughs> okay? So, the bottom line or the objective of this merchant is what? Pera-pera. Gawa tayong pera. Alright? Alam nyo po, yun ang nakakatakot eh. Di ba? Kapag hindi po tayo rooted kay Lord. Lahat ng makita natin, puro... Opportunity para rumakit, magnegosyo, kumita. Okay? Kaya po yung puso natin, kailangan talaga natin yan laging ipapalambutin sa salita ng Diyos. Otherwise, magmumuka tayong pera. Alright? Kaya dito sinasabi, this merchant was self-determined, self-confident, self-centered, and 
That was his main objective. Make money. Be rich. Okay? This person is doing all he can to build a kingdom for himself. All right? This person is doing all he can. Wala siyang idea or thought about the future. Sa kanya, ang iniisip niya, kaharian dito sa mundong ito. To build a kingdom for myself. Brethren, what is the ultimate, ano po, ano? Uh, what is, what do we miss when we go on empty boasting? Let's go to the next slide. It is the sin of failing to come to God in prayer. Okay? It's one of the most common offenses of a believer. All right? Siguro isipin natin, hindi, pero kapag si pag businessman ka, carpe diem, di ba? Seize the day. Seize the opportunity. Sayang eh. Lalo na pag may kausap ka, sasabihin sa'yo, eto na, pagkakataon na. Mga kapatid, kristyano po tayo. Pag sinabing kristyano, ibig sabihin ano, meron tayong Lord. Hindi na atin yung buhay natin. Nagkukonsulta tayo, nagihintay tayo sa Panginoon, nananalangin po tayo. Alright? Kaya po, failing to pray is one of the most common offenses of a believer. Tapos, ito po ang mangyayari. So, pag nabulilyaso yung plano, sino ngayon ang sisisihin? Si Lord. Lord! Ba't mo ko pinapadaan sa pagsubok? Self-inflicted yung pagsubok mo, kapatid. Diba? <laughs> Ba't ka dumaan sa pagsubok na yan? Hindi yan basta-bastang dumating lang sa buhay mo. Tanong, nag-walking in the spirit ka ba? Did you wait upon the Lord? Did you listen to the Lord? Pero kaya nga po eh, it's really, really arrogance because sometimes we're full of confidence, full of uh, ano po, experiences in the past that we've experienced a lot of victory. Eh, ang, ang masama kapag wala ka pang victory, arrogant ka pa, di ba? Pero even so, di ba, kahit marami kang experience sa pagninegosyo o sa... Sa, sa mga bagay-bagay, hindi po dapat. No? Hindi po dapat. Ayaw po yun ng Panginoon. We make plans, yun na nga po. And then we blame the Lord. Okay? So that's wrong. So now let's look at the folly. Okay? What is the folly? Bakit ito foolish? Why should we not have do empty boasting? Sabi sa verse 14, Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow sa Tagalog. Bakit? Ni, hindi mo pa naman alam kung ano mangyayari bukas sa buhay mo. Baka bukas matsagasaan ka ng pison. Alam niyo ba yung kasabihan na yun? Di ba? Siyempre, ang laki ng pison. Paano mo naman mamimisyon? Paano ka masasagasaan? Pero di ba? Paano kung bigla kang masagasaan? <laughs> what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Now, si Solomon warns about the sin of presumption. Proverbs 27, verse 1. So, hindi lang ito si James, ha? Proverbs 27, 1. Do not boast about tomorrow. Alright? Huwag kang magmalaki tungkol na meron ka pang bukas. For you do not know what a day may bring forth. Agree? Alright? Agree. Diba? Now, of course, similar din ito dun sa parable ng Panginoong Jesus tungkol dun sa parable of the rich fool. Do you remember that? The rich fool, the rich fool or the rich man was so wealthy that his barns were filled to overflowing. He said to himself, this is what I'll do. I'll, turn, I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus again. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, be merry. At ano po ang naging outcome? The Lord said, You fool! This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? In this parable, the man is called a fool not because he was planning for the future, but because he thought that he was in control of his future. Okay? So yun yung parable of the rich fool na Kapareho nitong sinasabi niyang James. Mga kapatid, wag po tayong maging uh, todo secure sa mga plano natin sa ating mga buhay. Plano man ito sa ating pag-aaral, sa career, or sa ating pagtanda. 
Let us not be so sure of our plans as if we know all the events of the future because we actually don't. We actually don't. There was a time in my life when I said to myself, uh, dito na ako tatanda sa ministry na to, dito na ako mamamatay sa ministry na to, ano po. Tapos biglang, boom! Biglang something hit me. Uh, ano? Unknown hit me on the head and suddenly our lives changed in just a snap. Alright, so in other words, akala mo siguradong 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 sigurado ka na. Tapos biglang binura ni Lord lahat ng plano pong, lahat ng plano pong yun. James chapter 4. You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist. You are a mist that appears for a little while. Alam, alam nyo po ba yung mist sa Tagalog? Sino nakakaalam ng mist? A mist for a little while and then vanishes. Correct. Diba? Hamog. Diba? Mist, yung hamog na nanggagaling po sa ilalim, ng, na, sa, sa lupa, diba? Na paggising mo sa umaga. So, nothing but vapor that vanishes before the rising sun. So, pag uminit na, wala na yung hamog na yan. So sabi ng Bible, ang buhay daw po natin ay para lang siyang hamog. Appears for a little while, tapos tapos na, tapos wala na. Share ko po sa inyo a few illustrations of people who made arrogant boasts. Example was a magazine publisher, J.I. Rodale, a zealous advocate of health foods, claimed at the age of 72 that he would live to be 100. The same week that his prediction appeared in the New York Times, he was being interviewed for a television program, again claiming that his bones were as strong as ever. Moments after making his boast, he died of a heart attack. Okay? Another person, Dr. Stuart, Stuart Berger, a nutritionist, claimed that he had the formula for living past the century mark. Although he had supposedly found the secret of youthfulness and convinced many to follow his advice, he died in his sleep at the age of 40, grossly overweight. <laughs> oh no, diba? Ano pa po? There was the author, Jim Fix, who advocated of running to prevent coronary trouble. Alright, so advocate siya ng running para wag kang ma-heart attack. Yet at the age of 52, he died of a heart attack. Ironically, while running. Okay? Nalala nyo ba yung guy na he called the strongest man in the world, si Jack LaLanne? Yung nagro ng ilang boats, no? Na sobrang lakas. Tapos, he vowed that he would live up to 100. You know what? He died at, when we were studying him way in the past, he died at the age of 92. He died of pneumonia. Alright, so, wow, pneumonia lang. Tapos, tapos na. Alright, so, mga kapatid, hindi natin talaga hawak ang buhay. Kaya nakakatakot mag, ano po eh, ba? Nakakatakot magyabang. Kasi, ako, huwag kang mayabang kasi talagang subukan ka ni Lord. Yan, nakakatakot talagang magsabi ng empty boast eh. Diba? Uy, ang lakas-lakas ko. Yung mga ganun tipo, diba? Na ang galing ko. Ah, kaya ko to. Tapos biglang, if you exalt yourself, God will humble you. Alright? So, let's be careful with our speech. Let's be careful with our words. Psalm 39 says, We are merely moving shadows. Mga anino lamang tayo. And all our busy rushing ends in nothing. Moses, who lived to be 120, wrote a prayer in which he said, our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Alam nyo po, pag naka 70 years old, na, may seven, meron ba tayo rito 70? Wala? Ay, meron! May seniors nga pala tayo. Alam nyo po, pag naka lumagpak ka ng 70, tapos nadadagdagan na yan. Wow, every year bonus. Every year bonus siya ni Lord. Amen? Oh, talagang ano yan. Lalo na kung paabotin ka ni Lord ng 80. Wow! Sobra-sobrang bonus na yun. Ano po? Kasi yun na nga eh, di ba? Our days may come to 70 years. Yan yung, yung average span of life. Brethren, our plans are not our own because our life is not our own. 
It is foolishness to ignore God and arrogantly plan our brief, few brief moments here on earth. That's why James 4 says, As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Brethren, this kind of boasting is sinful. That word arrogant schemes is a word describing a quack doctor roaming around making empty boasts to have cures to rid people of their ills. Is para kang isang albularyo na meron kang bitbit na kung ano-ano sa sinasabi mo na mapapagaling ka nito pero actually hindi naman. So basically, arrogant schemes means empty boasting. It is boasting about something that a person thinks he has but he doesn't really have. And the Bible says that it is evil. All right? Tanong, ano po bang klasing boasting ang nakalulugod sa Panginoon? The boasting that pleases God is the one that exalts in the Lord. Amen? The boasting that pleases God is the one that exalts in the Lord. Ibig sabihin, our confidence is in the Lord and not in ourselves. Our confidence is in the Lord and not in our plans. Our confidence is in the Lord, who He is, and what He is able to do, and not in our intelligence, not in our planning. We boast in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So true boasting that glorifies God is not boasting on our abilities. It is boasting in the Lord and putting our confidence in the Lord alone, who is the one who truly blesses. Amen? He is the one who truly blesses. He is the one who is able to make, to give us the ability to make wealth. All right? He is the one who gives us the ability to flourish in what we do, to be established in what we do. That is why when we are to boast, it is to boast in the Lord. He is my enabler. He is my sustainer. He is my wisdom. Amen? He is the one who establishes what I do in the Lord. So brethren, we are allowed to plan, even encouraged to plan, like the hardworking ant, but not in an, in an arrogant, no thought of God kind of planning. All right, so we must make our plans prayerfully, very humbly. And last, a practical solution for boasting. Okay, a practical solution for boasting. So, syempre nagpaplano pa rin naman tayo, di ba? Anong dapat nating sasabihin? Lagi nating sasabihin ito. You ought to say, verse 15, if it's the Lord's will. Amen? All right, can we say that all together? If it's the Lord's will. Yung short version niyan, Lord willing. Okay? Laging ganun. Pag sinasabi mong Lord willing, pinapaalala mo na hindi final yung plano mo. Okay ba yun? Hindi sinasabi mo na yung plano mo hindi yan, hindi yan final. Pwede yan burahin ni Lord anytime. Sinasubmit natin sa Panginoon. So brethren, the key to avoid boasting is to always include God in the picture. If it's the Lord's will... Now, these words, hindi to lucky charm, ah. Yung iba, sinasabi lang nila yung Lord willing, di ba? Sana magkatotoo, Lord willing, Lord willing. <laughs> lucky charm, hindi, lucky charm yun, ha? Okay? When we say Lord willing, it is humbly acknowledging that we must leave room for God to change our plans. Since God is sovereign and only He understands the future, we must therefore be open to God's sovereign will. Amen? Okay, let's be open. The purposes of God should always take priority over our plans. Amen? Okay, salamat sa Panginoon. Amen tayo lahat dito. Ibig sabihin, Lord, kasi mahirap, di ba? Kapag sa heart mo, hindi mo masurrender yung plano mo. Idol yan. Idol yan. Kapag hindi mo masabing, Lord, kahit hindi ito mangyari, Lord, kahit di ako mag-asawa. Naku, patay. ba? <laughs> Paano na yon? Lord, kahit na ano. Hindi po eh. Pag sinasabi nating Lord willing, Lord willing, ibig sabihin, Lord, submit ako sa plano nyo po. Kahit uh, ano po, baguhin nyo po ito, okay lang po. Of course, mahirap yon. Pero yun na nga, we need, we need 
to ask God to give us that kind of submissive heart. When we say it's the Lord's will, actually what we're doing is we're developing a godly and realistic attitude towards life. We accept that our lives are subject to the sovereign will of God. Psalm 19, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. Okay? Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. It's good to make plans, but we must submit all our plans to the Lord. Proverbs 16.3, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. I checked the meaning of the word commit, and you know what? Commit means to roll out to the Lord. Ilatag mo lahat sa panalangin ang mga plano mo. Inang ibig sabihin ng roll it out. Roll it out to the Lord. Ilatag mo lahat sa panalangin ang mga plano mo. Ibigay mo ito sa Panginoon at hayaan mong siyang mag-establish ng mga plano mo. Alright? So, ito na yung closing. Sabi ni James, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Alam nyo po, there is a big responsibility when we read the Bible and when we hear sermons or messages. Why? Because we now know the truth. We now know what's right and wrong. So, ibig sabihin, when you already know what's right and you don't do it, alright, you sin. Okay? Ang tawag po ron ay sin of omission. Alright? So, the letter of James abounds with exhortations to do good. And James tells us that if a person knows what he ought to do and doesn't do it, he has committed sin. So sins of omission is knowing in our hearts what is right and what is true and not doing it. So for example, if I know I should read my Bible and I don't do it, then I'm sinning. Okay? So ganon din po. Every time we make plans without asking God for guidance, when we already know that we should, we sin towards God. Alright? So let us conclude our matter for this morning. Brethren, do you want to stay in the blessing of God? Yes. Of course. Then it means do the will of God. All right? Do the will of God. Lagi, ano na po ito? Lagi nyo naririnig to sa akin. Walang napapahamak sa sumusunod sa Panginoon. Walang napapahamak sa nag-iintay sa Panginoon. Walang napapahamak sa nagpapasakop sa Panginoon. Merong order, may beauty, merong harmony, merong peace. And that brings glory to God when we submit it. Of course, the Lord, itetest niya yung heart natin. No, susubukan niya kung after lang ba tayo ng blessing o talagang nais nating mapapurihan po siya. So if we want the blessing of God, we have to stay in the will of God. So what is the blessing when we don't slander? Psalm 34. Whoever of you loves life... Do you love life? And desire to see many good days? Keep your tongue from evil. Okay? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Alright? Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. This is also a good reminder of why we should not boast. This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, amen, justice and righteousness on earth. Mga kapatid, ang Panginoon natin ay puno ng pag-ibig, habag, puno ng justisya, katuwiran. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Who is your boast? What is your boast? It's the Lord. The Lord is my portion. He is my inheritance forever. What will I lack? Amen? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. If there is going to be boasting, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen? Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let us all rise, brethren. Let's end in prayer. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We bless you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt your most holy, blessed, wonderful name. 
Maraming marami pong salamat. Sa inyo po namin, Panginoon, sinasubmit ang aming puso at ang aming buhay. Salamat po, Panginoong Jesus, our dear Father God, for your word to all of us today. Tunay nga, Panginoon, mahal niyo po kami. Dahil itong mga bagay na ito, Panginoon, ay sinasabi niyo po sa amin upang kami po, Panginoon, ay masanctify. Your truth preserves. Your truth cleanses. Your truth, O God, revives. And Lord, kami po ay humihingi ng kapatawaran kung kami po, Panginoon, ay nakakumit ng anumang bagay na kami po ay kinakaugnay ninyo patungkol po sa mga narinig namin ngayon. Kung kami po ay nakapag-slander ng tao, kung kami, Panginoon, ay nakapag-empty boasting, kinoconfess namin sa inyo, Panginoon, humihingi po kami ng inyong kapatawaran, patawarin po ninyo kami. Salamat po, Panginoon. And Lord Jesus, nais niyo po ang aming pong pagbabago. Nais niyo po, Panginoon, na kami po ay magbago. Nais niyo po na kami po ay lalo pa pong maging kawangis ng inyong bugtong na anak na si Kristo Jesus. Salamat, salamat, Panginoong Jesus. Lord God, this is your will for us, that we might be more conformed into the image of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Kinukomit po namin, aming Panginoon, ang inyo pong iglesia. Tinataas po namin ang bawat isa, ang bawat buhay at ang bawat puso. Lord God, na kami pong lahat ay lalago pa po sa inyo. Lalo nyo pa pong hawakan, O Diyos, at pagpalain ang aming pong lakarin sa inyo. Bless our walk of faith, Father God. Lord Jesus, you said in your word, I will instruct you. I will teach you with my eye upon you. I will counsel you with my holy word. I will instruct sinners in the way that they should go. And Lord God, we humble ourselves. We look to you for teaching. We look to you for instruction. You said in your word, Lord God, do not be like the mule or an ox or a beast that has no understanding but has to be controlled by bridle. Lord Jesus, you have given us understanding for we have been made in the image of God and use this understanding Lord so we will love you use this understanding Lord so that we will fear you Lord Jesus for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of God is understanding maraming maraming salamat Panginoon we give you thanks and praise for your word is what makes us wise Panginoon, kami po, O Jesus, ay mga mangmang, O Diyos. Ngunit ang salita po ninyo ang nagpapanauli ng aming puso, nagre-restore sa amin, nagbibigay po sa amin ng dunong. Salamat, Panginoong Jesus. Pinupuri ka namin. Kanyo po, O Diyos, ang siyang ang, ang pinapasalamatan po namin. Ini-entrust namin sa inyo, Panginoon, ang bawat isa. Patuloy namin dinadalangin, Panginoon, Lord God, nasa niyo man po kami, Lord, tinawag, inilagay, kami po ay magsilbing ilaw at asin. Dalangin po, Panginoon, ang inyo pong pagbuhos, ng inyo pong Lord, pagpapala, ng inyo pong presensya sa bawat tahanan. Puspusin niyo po ng presensya po ninyo, O Jesus, ang inyo pong church dito sa Gospel of Grace. Indeed, Father God, Lord, we pray that, Lord, our church, Lord God, your church, Lord, would be a blessing. Lord, may we be a blessing, Lord Jesus, to the city of Baguio. May we be a blessing, Lord God, to our neighborhood. May we be a blessing wherever you have called us. Lord Jesus, and all this we can only do because of the power of the Spirit at work in us. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Salamat po, Panginoon. Lord Jesus, we also entrust to you, Lord, yun pong mga may sakit. Kung sino man po sa mga sandaling ito, Panginoon, ang meron pong dinad pinagdadaan ng karamdaman o sino man po ang meron pong pinagdadaan ng Lord God suffering 
Lord, dalangin namin ang inyo pong pagpapagamot, pagpapagaling, O Jesus. Dalangin po namin ang inyo pong, Lord God, comfort at encouragement sa sino mang nangangailangan ito. Kinokomit namin sa inyo ang aming pong mga handog, ang aming tides, ang aming offerings. This we give with cheerful hearts. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege to become partners in the kingdom of God. We bless you, we love you, we worship you. To you we give back, Lord, all the glory, the praises, and the honor. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Sister Marga, before we leave, let's sing it, the song again, uh, How Good It Is. Tayo po yung mawi sa Panginoon. Narakpakan pa natin siya.
po and God bless everyone. Praise the Lord.